let's say we have an electron that is moving perpendicular to a magnetic field with a uh, value of 755 nanoteslas, and I want to know the time per revolution. So we have an electron that's moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. You know the shape of the path that's going through class is a circle. Anytime you have a charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field, it's going to move in a circle. The time per revolution has a specific name. That name of that is Yuchin. Can you repeat the question? Time per revolution has a specific name. No, that would be the angular speed. Um, the time per revolution is slightly different. Uh, Tim? It is also not the frequency, although it is highly related to the frequency. Winter. The period is the inverse of the frequency. So it's equal to the period. So we're looking for the period of this charged particle in the magnetic field. Where would you like to start, Lee? Okay. We have to sum the forces in the indirection. What's the only force acting on the object? The magnetic force. Now, again, this assumes that the force of gravity is negligible, which it is for an atomic particle. So this is equal to, keep going, Ellen. Mass times centripetal acceleration. Mass times centripetal acceleration. Pick it up from here, please, Bill. Uh, so, so force of magnetic is equal to mass times uh, angular speed squared over radius? Class? No. no. That's not what <laughs> That's not what you meant. I agree. Um, uh, I forgot the equation for that, but oh, velocity squared over radius. What kind of velocity? Uh, Tangential velocity. Yeah. Left hand side, we have the magnetic force. What are we going to substitute for that, Nitish? I'm going to do QVB sine theta, but yeah, it's the charge times the velocity times the cross product with the magnetic field. All right, from here, please, catch. Um, well, uh, you can substitute for that velocity. We could, except, um, sure, we could do that. That would be fun. Why not? Mass times r times omega, that's squared, divided by the radius qvb sine theta. We get mass times r squared times omega squared, divided by the radius charge times velocity times b times. Uh, let's do this class, what's the angle? So we put the sine of 90 here so we can get rid of that because sine of 90 is just one. Uh, what of our r's, radius cancels, we get charge times velocity times b equals mass times the radius times the angular velocity squared. Yeah. What puts yeah. that in first? With that? The R omega squared is that also equal to acceleration? True. Yeah, I mean, we just derived that. That's true. I mean, because centripetal acceleration is the tangent of velocity squared divided by the radius, it's also equal to R times omega squared. I'm only doing what Kevin's doing. Okay. Can we go back and like, cross out? Are you, are you saying that we shouldn't have done the calculus? Well, I'm. <laughs> the truth is, we could do what Catherine's suggesting, but the problem is here, we now have velocity and angular velocity in the same equation, right? So we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. It's actually easier to deal with that right up here by getting rid of one of the velocities and saying class. Everyone brought velocity to the party. Everyone brought velocity to the party. <laughs> Catherine, the truth is we can get there, it's just you're, we're taking extra steps in order to get there. Uh, I don't know, what we're solving for, I don't know. So we have a, a relationship here. Unfortunately, I don't see period anywhere in there. Travis? Uh, well, tangential velocity is uh, omega r. 
right? I feel like we're going back to what we were doing here. I agree, okay, sure. The tangent velocity equals r times omega. I agree with that. Okay. And then omega is equal to change in theta over the time. The key here is that we need angular velocity is equal to change in theta over change in time. And what are we going to do with that? Gary. We're so close to it. We just have to put all the pieces together. We need this piece, Gary. Uh, rearrange it. Unfortunately, rearrange it, I don't know, isn't going to help me out. <laughs> Sierra. Uh, okay, the change in theta is too positive. When you go around once, the change in theta is too pi. Dimensions? Radians. Radians. And then you have the time of the period. So there is what we need. And we can combine that with the fact that tangent velocity equals the radius times the angular velocity. If we multiply both sides times the radius, we get the radius times the angular velocity equals 2 pi times the radius divided by the period, or the tangential velocity equals 2 pi times the period. We can now substitute in 2 pi r over the period for the tangential velocity into this equation. Charge times the magnetic field equals mass times the, or divided by the radius, multiplied by 2 pi times the radius divided by the period. The radius cancels out. We get charge times the magnetic field equals 2 pi times the mass divided by the period. We are trying to find the period, so we'll solve for that. Period equals 2 pi times the mass divided by charge times the magnetic field. Please give me all of the numbers. Uh, they got 2 pi and then mass. Oh. Uh, oh, it's an electron, sorry. Yep. Um, mass of an electron is 1 point or 9.11 times 10 to the negative 30 first to 31 kilograms. Divided by charge? Uh, 1 .6, negative 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19. And B is 755 times 10 to the negative 6. That's left part. Nano is 10 to the negative 9. We get a number, and that number is? Negative 4.7400 um, How many sig figs did we start with? Two? That's fine. Uh, so negative 47 uh, microseconds. Uh, you gotta love it when we get negative time. Mm. Oh wait, that's not good. Negative time, Travis. You're supposed to use the magnitude of the charge? Why? I want to know why we're only supposed to use the magnitude of the charge. Yes? Because we've already talked about the direction. When we drew our free body diagram, which we didn't really need to do because there was only one force, we picked the direction which involved that negative. That's what the negative has to do with. So we're not going to put the negative in again because that would be redundant and switch the direction completely. 